Hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to Moodle MOOC 3 and our third session of the month. This is going to be a month of uh, about 28 presentations. My name is Nelly Deutsch and I'm going to be moderating. I'm not Ronen, but he should be here any second to entertain us. So a little bit about uh, the MOOC for this year. This year we're having lots of different kinds of presentations. Some are about e-learning, some are about Moodle, some are about life. And um, we're trying to uh, vary it as much as possible. In addition, there's the Moodle for teachers for beginners and non-beginners. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask as we go. If you could just add in the chat where you're from and how you got here. Did you take a taxi? Did you get here by driving? Did you drive, take the train, a plane? How'd you get here from where you are? And where exactly are you? All right, so uh, if you're doing that, I see that our speaker did not go through the course presenter link. There's now a new feature on WizIQ called co-presenter, which means that two people can present. And that's why you see me with another name, which means that you can come into class as a presenter whenever you want to a month in advance and practice and get things ready. So this is a, a pretty recent feature. So we're going to get started. And I'm going to show you our presenter. All right, so our presenter, you can see that um, is very, very skilled at various skill at various things. So let me just pass on the webcam and microphone. And I hope you've got a headset. <laughs> Otherwise, I have to. Oh. Oh, there you are. Yes, you got a headset. Yay! Okay, great, great. Glad you made it. All right, people are going to be coming in. So, uh, you know, latecomers online is a thing. All right, so there you go. I've given you writing tools too, so you can uh, move your slides. And that's it. So, welcome, welcome to WizIQ. I guess this is your first time uh, in this virtual environment. And how did you get here? Did you drive? Did you um, fly? Oh, I see that uh, Tom. Um, I flew. <laughs> okay, that's great. All right. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, you've got a lot of uh, different skills here teacher, educator, student, comedian, podcast host, chef marketeer a personal brand can you elaborate you have to do talking yes <laughs> um, so where am i originally from i'm actually originally from also from israel i was born in israel yeah are you also from israel Nelly? no not right now yeah no. there. not right now where are you looking right now i'm actually in uh, venezuela but that's that's a secret venezuela mm-hmm Secret, eh? Yeah. I guess the government's looking for you. I yep. Understand. Yes. Anyways. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. So I was born there, but I grew, up, I grew up in England and I grew up in Canada. Then I also moved to Canada, lived in China for a bit, taught some English, some ESL there. Um, I flew on a carpet. I fell in love with teaching. I was in university and I saw an ad for teaching English overseas. And I went to China for a year to teach ESL. And when I came back, I went to school to become a certified Canadian teacher. And oh. I've been doing that more or less ever since. So right now, I currently teach at a high school. All right. A private high school. And sure, no problem. So where am I originally from? I'm actually originally from also from Israel. I was born in Israel. Are you also from Israel, Nelly? So, they can go to so I was born there. And basically Not right now? Where are you located right now? And study courses there. So that's me as a teacher and Venezuela as a student. Secret, eh? I guess the government's looking for you. I understand. Anyways, <laughs> um, 
Yes, yeah, so I was born there, but I grew, up, I grew up in England, and I grew up in Canada, then I also moved to Canada, lived in China for a bit, taught some English, some ESL there, and yeah, basically, I fell in love with teaching. I was in university, and I saw an ad for teaching English overseas, and I went to China for a year to teach ESL, and when I came back, I went to school to become a certified Canadian teacher, and I've been doing that more or less ever since. So right now I currently teach at a high school, like a private high school, and most of the students are all international students. And what we do is we help them improve their English, or so they take Canadian ESL credits so they can go to university and basically be successful in university and study courses there. So that's me as a teacher and educator. As a student, I believe that we're all students, that we're always always learning and we always want to improve ourselves. I'm always learning more and more languages. So for example, I'm still learning Chinese, I'm learning Mandarin. I learned that in my spare time. I'm also trying to learn Spanish because I want to go to South America one day. Um, you guys have beautiful beaches there. And there's no beaches in Canada. It's really, really cold. Canada, there's a lot of snow, and I want to get out of here. I want to go and relax on the beach. So, if I if I learn some Spanish, if I go to South America, I'll definitely be a lot very very helpful. Um, something else that I do, I'm also a stand-up comedian. So also in the evenings, I go to different bars and different clubs. I do comedy. Um, Canada, it's very very interesting. Um, a lot of comedy started in Canada, a lot of famous comedians started out here, like Mark Harry. Um, there's a lot of comedy clubs here um, called Yuck Yucks, and they actually have a course, they actually have a university course where you can get your bachelor's in comedy. So they actually have a three-year program where you can study comedy. I didn't do that, but they had a, I think it was a one semester master's in comedy course. So I took that course and basically to give you a masters in comedy which is fairly interesting so I did that and I really enjoyed it and I've been doing stand-up ever since next podcast host so something that I do is I have a podcast on iTunes it's called um, English Funcast laugh and learn and basically what I do is I read all kinds of different jokes and then I explain them in English and it's a podcast to help you improve your English and the reason I started it <laughs> is because there's a lot of English podcasts out there, but a lot of them are a lot of them are garbage. To be honest, they have like Voice of America and BBC English, and it's very boring topics. Um, the people's voices are very monotone, and it's nothing really exciting. There was no real exciting, I guess, English podcasts out there with a different method to learn English. And the way I figure it out is if I tell you a joke in English and you laugh, that means that you basically understood the joke. It confirms that you understood the joke. Because if you didn't laugh, it's either you didn't understand it or it's not funny. If English and to, to know that you understood it because you laughed. Next is Chef. I really a chef. I just put it there for fun. There's all these people and they put a bought me section and they put like, what's so special about me, this and that. So I don't know. I just wanted to film. Let's go to the next slide. In of all kinds of stuff. So I guess I'm kind of a chef. I make amazing cereal. So I like to eat Lucky Charms. And I know how to put just the right amount of milk in the cereal. Some people, they put too much milk. Uh, some people put too little. I put the exact amount. So whenever you take a spoonful of the cereal, you get like maybe like five or six pieces of Lucky Charm and like a lot of milk, like a good amount of milk. So that's what that's my secret talent, and that's why I'm a chef. Also, um, the last two things are a marketer and a personal brand. So that's pretty much what I'm going to speak to you guys about today. A teacher, and you guys teach online, and I want to help you guys become successful teachers, and I want you guys to learn how to um, differentiate yourself between other teachers and how to make yourself a brand that the students can trust, and definitely. Um, improve as a teacher and also as in your career as in teaching all right so let's go to the next slide control for this all right so how to become an organic cash cow becoming a teacher that is a brand your students can trust all right 
shopping. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about today about creating your own brand and how to promote it as a teacher and definitely how to get more students for yourself. Just look at the next picture. So what you should know after this terrific presentation, so what we're going to learn today is what a personal brand is, how to enhance your personal brand to stand out of the crowd, and steps in developing yourself as a brand, and also how to market the brand named you. All right, next. So what do these people have in common? So you got Kofi Amogabendra. I've got some Oprah Winfrey, Bill Gates, Richard Branson. Uh, we've got a lot of people here. Nelson Mandela, Joyce Aria. So all these people are them, not because, not only for what they do, but basically a brand, right? Okay. Um, Richard Branson, creative gin. Um, Oprah Winfrey had her own shopping. I mean, she had her own show. And Bill Gates, that he created Microsoft. We also know them for who they are, their brands and their Brand is something that you can trust. Don't forget that. That's what a brand is. So there's a brand that is um, a product, like Nike. They create products. That's a brand. And then we're talking today about brand that is people. A uh, person can become a brand. So what is personal branding? So your personal brand is the powerful, clear, positive idea that comes to mind whenever other people people think of you. So it's what you stand for, the values, abilities, and actions that others associate with you. It is the impression you create, the mental picture or idea that is formed based on your actions and inactions. So everything you do and say impacts people's perception about you. This is your personal brand. So if you think about it, like a lot of celebrities right now, they're definitely personal brands. They become brands, and then um, they market a lot based on that. For example, like last year, and they have like their own clothing sh stores. Like Puff Daddy has a brand called Sean John. Um, Jay Z has a brand called Rockaware and people relate to him and they buy the, his clothes because they trust his clothing style, they like his style, they want to be more like him and that's what a personal branding is. So what personal brand is and is not? So a personal brand is not just a traditional resume, CV, beautiful printed on a nice quality of paper. It's not personal business cards. It's not professional memberships and respected organizations within your field. What it is, it's a person's gut for you. Now, something that's really been helpful for me in order to get to Canada, like the reason I decided to try to make myself into a personal brand is because in Canada, being a teacher, it's nothing. There's so many teachers here. We're not respected at all, really. If I cease to teach, English, it's easy for me to get a job because they want foreign teachers. But in Canada, there, there's so many teachers out there because they all want a government teaching job because they get paid a lot of money, get good pension. So there's too many teachers and there's not enough jobs. So there's so many of us that are unemployed. So when you go to like an interview and you show them a resume, everyone else has a resume also. If you show them a business card, everyone else also has a business card. So you have to find out what makes you different, right? So one of the reasons that, one of the things that helped me create a brand was actually doing podcasts. Because when I created a podcast, I got a ton of listeners who listen to my podcast each and every day. I had I created a forum on my website where people can comment on the podcast and tell me how they, what they like about it, give any comments. And when I went to interviews in Canada for jobs, I'd be like, I ha here's my resume, here's my business card, here's all the stuff that everyone else has. They'll be like, you know what, I also have this podcast. And I let them listen to my podcast and read the comments of my listeners and how they enjoy it. Um, YouTube. YouTube is something I started recently. YouTube is also, I think, very, very helpful. But I'm, I think podcasting 
right now is a lot more effective because of podcasting you'll get a lot each and every single day so for example i created a youtube channel around a month ago or maybe one or two months ago and those videos that i produce it takes me a long time to create hours and with podcasting it takes maybe like 15 maybe half an hour to create a podcast but with a and I get around 4,000 listeners a day with my podcast with my YouTube video maybe I'll get 4,000 listeners every two or three weeks see so that I think the reach that you get from podcasting is right now is much better all right next slide so branding yourself helps to define who you are what you are about branding yourself as a way to associate with value with a product the product being you it builds demand for your services talents and skills it builds a special image for the outside world personal branding can make you more memorable differentiate you from the others and stand out from the crowd all right so it separates you from your peers colleagues and workers so it definitely helps you like per building a personal brand helps you so a lot of people to create their own blog to create their own personal brand the thing is the fact is think about this way how many teachers are there right now in the world like there's so many teachers like on this was IQ like for this whole MOOC there's so many people there's like 1300 or 1600 teachers you have to be different than other people you have to be able to separate yourself so for myself, what am I good at? I like making people laugh. So I, I figured I created English Funcast. I teach English by helping people, um, before I teach them through jokes. So I try to make it fun or interesting. Um, my online English course that I created, I, it's, I have a lot of news articles that my students read. But what makes it different is, is that basically these news articles that I have, they're all fake. They're just exaggerations. They're just jokes of other news articles. And that makes it interesting for my students to read and to learn. So you've got to find a way to make yourself different. And it has to be something that you're really good at. All right. How? How can we become different? All right. So differentiation, creating value, be found, networking, be memorable and calculated risks all right so if you're good at many things um you can take all those things but you're gonna have to i guess put in some sort of order i think it's important to structure what you're good at and teach based on that so let's go we just talked about differentiating how you're different people how you have to be different than the other um, teachers now creating value Basically, there's a right now. There's a good marketer right now in New York. His name is Gary Vanderchuk, and basically, his teaching is if you want to get students, you got to build value with these students before you ask any money. You got to basically give them a lot of content for free, and you have to give them content that's of good value. Let me write his name. So his name is Gary. Let me see if I can spell it right. Vander. So, so to create value. So, for example, I create the podcast. My podcast that I create as a teacher, it's completely for free for everyone to listen. And what happens is people listen to it every day. The routine, like I'm going to wake up in the morning, I'm going to listen to this podcast today on the way to work or on the bus, and they get used to it. They listen to it more and more. And then, let's say when I do have a product, let's say if I have an online English course to sell, then. They know they have a relationship with me. They kind of feel guilty because I give them all these podcasts for free. So they end up purchasing the course and they end up enjoying it because they enjoy me as a person because they already have that relationship from me from listening to the podcast. So that's what is about creating value. You have to give content for free all the time. Next is you have to be found. See, I guess there's many ways to be found on the internet. You have to find a good way to distribute yourself to be found. Um, that's why I like podcasting once again because you just get a lot of listeners. Podcasting right now, it's blowing up. YouTube is also a good way, but YouTube, I find it to be a bit saturated. It's a bit harder to get views. Um, Facebook is good. I think Facebook is still good, even though thin. But I think you could get a lot of fans from Facebook. 
I'd use forums. I think forums are very good. If you go on the internet and look at different forums, like English forums, you can find communities there of people who want to improve their English and you can speak with them and definitely build a relationship with them and get more students from that. First screencasting. Or I'm going to take questions later on. I'm reading this stuff. I'm, I'm losing my place. All right, networking. All right, so networking. Networking is good. I think you guys have to remember, even if you're an online teacher, you have to do a lot of stuff offline. There's actually still, there's a lot of money to make, to make being online, but doing sales offline is just as rewarding and you can get a lot of business from that. So what does that mean exactly? Let's say you have an online course. You have an online course on WizIQ and you want to sell your online course. So there's already lots of people on Wiz like you and you're trying to get these students. But maybe in your community there's a couple of English schools that could use your online course. You can go to these English schools and speak with the owner of the school and be like, hey, you know what? Do you want to make some extra money? I have this online course on Wiz IQ. Um, why don't you get your students to sign up for it and I'll give you some kind of commission or whatnot. So that's definitely a good way. So networking, remember, networking shouldn't only be for online, it should also be for offline. You can ne you can network and market your online content offline. That's really, really important. Next is be memorable. So people will remember you. So offline, like I said, at different English schools offline near your community, go speak with them and try to get them to sell your courses. So be memorable. Uh, for example, try to create your own personality, something that people can relate to you. So if you listen to my podcast, I start my podcast always exact same way. I was like, hi, my name's Ron. How are you guys doing today? Me? I'm doing amazing. And that's what I always say. I always start this exact same way. I'm doing amazing. How are you guys doing today? What? I'm doing amazing. They listen to like 20 or 30 podcasts and they expect that from each and every podcast because they get used to it and they remember you by it. It actually gets annoying because people start sending you emails or going to try to chat to you on Skype and always, how are you doing today? And they'll always want you to say, I'm doing amazing. <laughs> All right. Next is calculated risk. So I guess calculated risk must be in marketing. Sometimes try to do, um, I try to do sometimes marketing campaigns to brand myself on the networks like Facebook or whatnot based on holidays. And sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't work. So for example, for New Year's, I'll do maybe a marketing campaign saying, work out your English, and I'll show maybe someone training in the gym like you would train in a school to improve your English. So this, sometimes you should also take risks in marketing. If you think you have a good marketing idea you want to do to get more students, don't be scared. Try it out because the worst thing is you might fail, but if it doesn't work, you can try again. Do I pay for marketing on Facebook? Sometimes I pay, um, sometimes I advertise on my Facebook page. So it, it depends. But calculated risk is basically, you never know what's going to happen when you run a marketing campaign. Um, you figure, I'm going to do this, it might be risk, you might lose 100 bucks. But sometimes even if you lose $100 on a campaign, you'll still learn something. All right, next slide. Differentiate and value. So you gotta research what you're doing. It's always important to research what other people are doing. I always research my competition. I always um, look for new and different methods of um, teaching English. Um, something that I'm planning to do right now is to be very authentic. So what that means is I'm going to create, actually this month, I'm going to create a new English course and it's going to be completely authentic. It's going to be something that's never been done before. And by that is I'm going to basically create an English course where it's all going to be um, first person point of view from the teacher. So I think I'm, I got like these crazy glasses that have a camera in it and I'm going to record my English classes that I teach at a high school and basically I'm going to post those as lessons and it's going to be insane because you're going to see how my students learn, how I teach 
but from my eyes. Be yourself. Remember, always be yourself. People like you for who you are. Not all your students are going to like you. Not all your online students are going to like you. Not everyone's going to take your trial class are going to like you. But that's okay, right? That not everyone can marry you. You know what I'm saying? When you marry someone, you find someone specific, right? It's the same thing with a teacher. Um, students like specific types of teachers. And just be yourself. People like you for who you are. Those who don't like you for who you are, it's okay. There's other teachers for them, right? You can't say you're the best teacher in the world. You you could be a good teacher for a certain amount of people, but from other students, maybe they'd learn better from a different teacher. And that's fine. It's an analogy for sales. All right, next, be found. So how can you be found? So you have, that, the most important thing is have your own website. Because, yeah, I guess more or less, I'm kind of a last minute person or a planet, but I usually plan my stuff in draft, I don't know. And remember, the most important thing is gift to get, right? Give as much stuff for free as possible and then ask. That Gary Vanderchuk, I guess that link that Nelly posted, um, it's actually really helpful. He has a new book out right now, it's called Jab, Jab, Right Hook. And I definitely recommend you guys to buy that book. It teaches you um, definitely how to market yourself and definitely how to get more students as it. What he teaches basically, give up free content, like two jabs. Like when you box, give a jab, some free content, another jab, free content, and give a right. And the right hook basically means ask for a sale, ask for money. So that's what that means. It's an analogy for sales. All right, next, be found. So how can you be found? So you ha it's important that the most important thing is have your own website. Uh, have your own website. It's good to have your name. I created a company like English Funcast is a company that I created. But it's also because I also do comedy, so I want to have a different brand for me as a comedian. Um, so that's good. Search engine optimization. Search engine optimization, what is it really? What is op search engine optimization? Why is it here? Because it sounds good. But <laughs> basically, search engine optimization is have your website and it's good when other people post links to your website. That's the best way, I guess, to SEO your website. Other blogs, um, maybe write a guest article, guest post in their blog, they'll write one on yours, and that's the best way to do SEO for your um, website, for your brand. Next is social media profiles. So what social media should you use? Right now I hate Facebook because Facebook, they change their algorithms and you're not getting a lot of traffic when you post stuff. I'd say Pinterest is good, Twitter is good, um, Vine is good. Right now, I'm really trying to do um, Google Plus. I think Google Plus is going to probably be the future, even though nobody really uses it, but they're starting to force people to use it more and more. So you might not notice, but YouTube right now, all the comments in YouTube, it's connected with Google um, Plus. So whenever someone comments on your YouTube video, it actually becomes their status post on the Google Plus profile. So this is huge. So it's definitely recommend you guys to have a nice profile on Google Plus. And yeah, I see you can, you can also do Hangouts on Google Plus. That's a great way. Next is my favorite podcasting. That's what I do. Podcasting. What makes people ask me what's the difference between podcasting and video? So video would be YouTube. Why do I like podcasting more than video? Here's the deal. YouTube, anyone can create a channel and anyone can um, put videos on YouTube. It's very, very easy. You can use your camera and you can put it on in two seconds. With podcasting, the most important thing in podcasting, you have two important things. Number one, you need to have quality equipment and you have to learn how to record it. And it's a bit more difficult than making video nowadays. And you need to invest in a really good microphone. So, you see, I have like around a hundred, I have a, with a snow, I use a snowball microphone, it's around a hundred bucks, but it's a good investment. So I use a snowball microphone, and number two is you have to, you need host, um, you have to pay for that, and that's the big difference. That's why there's not a billion podcasts, because some people are cheap to pay for their um, hosting. For hosting, I use Libsyn, and for 
for recording, I don't use Audacity. Audacity. I use GarageBand. I found GarageBand to be very useful for Mac or for PC. I used Adobe Audition, which is a bit complicated, but it's pretty good once you get the hang of it. Let me write that down. Adobe. So for Mac, GarageBand. And for PC, I use Adobe Audition. And you know, it actually took me probably maybe like four or five days to real, to learn how to podcast because I didn't know how to record the audio and how to edit it. But that's why YouTube is amazing. As YouTube, um, I look for YouTube videos on how to um, podcast, how to use the software, and it's amazing. I definitely recommend GarageBand. GarageBand is the greatest thing ever for podcasting. It's super, super, there's only one thing you have to do. If you're podcasting, um, you click on yourself and you change the filter to, um, I guess if you're a male, male voice, um, and then noise reduction. There's a noise reduction in it. Grass band is nice. Offline marketing is also really good. With Snowball, I have the I have the original Snowball, the blue Snowball. It's blue Snowball. I recommend the blue Snowball. There's another one. There's the Snowball Ice. Do not get the Snowball Ice. The Snowball Ice is a cheap knock. It's like the cheaper version of the Snowball, and it doesn't have all the settings. So I said the Snow Blue Snowball. I think it's called. I'll look after and uh, after this i'll take a look and i'll write it down because i have to go look on the internet what's exa what's called exactly but i think it's called blue snowball and also, if you're a teacher, you want to find but there's also blue snowball ice and it's online you should also use this there's online networking where you can meet people on online in different groups um nelly we've met each other on i guess facebook through facebook we met each other and that's a type of networking there's some facebook groups for teachers or edupreneurs where we talk and discuss stuff but offline marketing is also really good um, you can go meetup.com is pretty good you can find different people on meetup yeah this is the microphone I have like a link so yeah it's, yeah, it's a good deal 60 so let's go back to networking <laughs> so networking offline is good um, I recommend meetup meetup is really good if you want to find students go to meetup.com and there's lots of English meetups with people, and you can just go ahead and speak with people there, and you can just definitely go ahead. Good way to find students. Um, so you meet up. But also, if you're a teacher and want to find students, the best way for you to make revenue is basically go to schools yourself and show them your online courses. And that's basically the best way. Remember, sales is sales. You're a teacher, but you're also a marketer, and you're also a salesperson at the same time. You're doing everything. You're creating a course, and you're marketing it, and you're selling it, right? If when you're at school, when you teach at a school, all you do is teaching. It's very easy. But if when you're an online teacher, you got to be all of that in order to be successful. Because if you have a course, no one's gonna see it, right? No one's gonna see it unless you market it. So do you, you guys have a lot of. Next, you take risks. That's basically what it's about. It's all about taking risks. Why is there a picture of Ben and Jerry? I had notes to this PowerPoint. I don't know if I can see them, but pretty much Ben and Jerry are these two hippies from like the seven, and they created an ice cream because there was a band. It's called The Living Dead, and they wanted to idolize one of their singers, one named Mr. Garcia, one of the singers of this band called Living Dead and they create this crazy huge popular brand they took a risk and they created this ice cream brand and they became really rich and popular so remember always take a risk because the worst part is if you don't take a risk you never know what will happen right so always try it out I have a question that was really really important all right so this, I guess it's the last slide yeah so here, at the here, end is where they're sitting and, and create your teaching materials you know, create your brand right. try to market okay, it as much as possible be confident and at the end of the day be yourself you remember you if not uh, everyone's gonna like your teaching style so that you can be but there will always be people who do, do, do method do and those are the people you want those are the people you're really gonna help because at the end of the day 
um, you're making money, you're not making money, you're also there to help people. You want to help people and you want to be able to motivate them to study and to improve English. And if you can do that, then this will just make you, your life a lot better and just makes you a lot happier, you know? I'm happy when I teach students and I can see that I motivate them and that they have improve a lot, you know? That's what makes me happy. All right, so I guess right now for the rest of the time, I'll take any questions. If you guys have any questions, we won't have to take any questions. So that, that's pretty much right. I've always been myself. Um, I've always acted the way I do. Sure. And that's basically, that's basically it. Try to be yourself and to don't do illegal stuff and don't get thrown in jail. Because then you'll lose your teaching license. But not if you're an online teacher, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> Good, good point. Good point. Yeah, but that that's excellent. Uh, about, uh, mm, you know, not caring. I just don't care. You know, you know, I just, if you want to be yourself, you know, if you want to be free, just don't really always care whatever uh, people think. Questions, uh, and here, I'm looking that's at pretty much it. Oh, be, learn uh, to act. You know, I think you have to act in a normal way, so you don't go to jail and people think that you're so you're a lunatic. But other than that, just be yourself. Yeah, you <laughs> so that that's oh, pretty that's, much right. Yeah, I've always been I myself. Um, I've always acted the way I do, and that's basically that's basically it. Try to be yourself and to don't do illegal stuff and don't get thrown in jail, because then you'll lose your teaching license. But not if you're an online teacher, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Anything else? Fixes it, fixes it, it makes it a lot more clearer. What I like about um, the snowball, which is really good in the back, I guess you guys can see, is it frozen up here? If you look at the back here, um, there's three different settings that you can have it on. Yeah. You can have it just if you're talking by yourself, if you're maybe three or four people, it has a 360 um, type of recording, so record the whole room. And then it has one that's also pretty good for music if you're like playing a song. It's good for recording that. I have it right here. This is a snowball. I have the snowball right here. I just want to see it. So what's good about this? If you're interviewing someone. Yeah. So there's something you can add to. You can get a pop. I, I added this to my snowball. So what this is, I guess it's a filter. So sometimes when you speak, um. Is it pop noises when you do like a P sound or an R sound or an S sound? Um, I use so then say um, pop or something goes pss, I don't know. Okay. So it fixes it, fixes any hissing, it makes it a lot more clearer. What I like about um, the snowball, which is really good in the back, I guess can, you guys can see, has it frozen up here? When you're posting a podcast, if you look at the back here, um, there's three different settings that you can have it on. So you can have it just if you're talking by yourself. If you're maybe three or four people, it has a 360 um, type of recording. So record the whole room. And then it has one that's also pretty good for music. If you're like playing a song, it's good for recording that. So that's what's good. You, you can set it up to record. If you're interviewing someone, buying two mics and a mixer, you can just change the setting on the Snowball and use that. So definitely recommend Snowball, and definitely recommend GarageBand. If you have GarageBand, that's probably the best and easiest software for um, creating a podcast. Um, for hosting a podcast, um, I use Libsyn. I can put it, the link right here. And these guys are probably the best um, hosting company for podcasts. Remember, when you're hosting a podcast, you want to make sure that people you. all over the, the world, and I think Libsyn has the most servers, so people in America can get it, and people in Japan, people in Africa, people anywhere in the world can get it easily because they have the proper servers. Because you have to realize, you can't host pod. You could host a podcast yourself. I guess people try to host it on WordPress, but you're not going to really have the bandwidth for that because... 
how to become a cash cow. A cast, and I have 4,000 people who listen to it per day. Hey, so that's you have to create a that's over four gig. That's even more than four gig. I think it's like forty gig. Yeah, so I get, it's forty gig a day in bandwidth that people download my podcast. So that's insane. So most servers can't handle that. So you really do need to find a really good um, hosting service. And Lipsync, they don't care. You can they have they do. I think they host ninety five percent of the podcasts on iTunes, and they have all the bandwidth you need. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind creating a course on podcasting. If there's no course right now, and there's a few, I wouldn't mind creating a course. It's definitely doable. How we encourage to produce free courses, but then do we become a cash cow when we don't make cash? How to become a cash cow? How to make a free course? All right, let's talk about that. Like I said before, um, now. Is you have to create a lot of free content. What's a podcast? Podcasts are free content that builds you up brand that builds you up as a teacher. Um, similar with courses, what would you do with a course? How would you make money from a course? You, you probably generate maybe a free course or a sample of the course where you give a, a few um, seminars for free for the course and charge for the rest. I think mean, that's the best way. Alright, so this is my online course that I created, so what it is is basically, um, it's like a membership. Yeah, I charge people with PayPal. What I've been doing as a teacher, I created my... Get four new lessons from me, so I teach lessons about English news, English conversation, English PM, oh, no problem. English I think something else I've been doing as a teacher for online teaching, I, I, I created my own, I guess, membership site. So that's basically me teaching, but I, I have lessons each and every week. So I have an English Funcast Institute. That's where I created. It's Let me find the link. Once you already have all those lessons and you get new students, you don't have to create new So this is my online course that I've created. Yeah, I use Vimo for that cool video for the promotional video. Alright, so this is my online course that I created. So what it is is basically um it's like a membership site. People pay me monthly and each and every week I they get four new lessons from me. So I teach lessons about English news, English conversation, English idioms, and English music. And the lessons, the way I record is actually use my snowball mic. So basically, it's a PDF lesson, and they get an MP, audio MP3 of me basically instructing the lesson. And that's what I've been doing. And I think it's it's a, I think it's really good creating a membership site because it's reoccurring income um, every day, um, every month. They pay the membership again and again, and they can stop anytime they'd like. And I, it also makes me create a lot of content because I actually still have to create over four lessons each and every week on top of podcasting and all that stuff. But what's good is once you already have all those lessons and you get new students, you don't have to create new content for them. Yeah, I use Vimo for the actual video, for the promotional go. But if you check, if you go onto that site, the membership site, English Funcast Institute, when people actually get out, so see if they look at it and don't end up purchasing it, they ask them if they would like to get a free book. And what I do is I offer them a free ebook, and then they also get free um, email video lessons. And that's a good way to build a relationship with them. Well, where do you develop the ebook? All right, so for the ebook, the way I developed the ebook is pretty much this word. You can use Word to make an ebook. So I just wrote the book in Word and I saved it as a PDF. That's what an ebook is. But for the ebook, it's not really a long ebook. The ebook is maybe, I think, like six or seven pages. So ebooks don't have to be like 50 pages or 100 pages. The ebook is basically, it talks about the way I teach my method, the laugh and learn method, where I. I Teach through jokes and actually has a joke in the ebook 
And what I find amazing is this joke I found, and I put it in the ebook. And if you read this joke, it actually does change the way your brain learns English. It's like the most amazing joke of all time. You guys should definitely check it out. Why, why do I see all these beard comments, guys? I don't have a beard. I didn't shave for maybe like four days, and this is a beard? I don't know. A lot of people in Canada grow up and shave. I haven't shaved for four or five days because it's really cold here, guys. It's really cold outside, and your face freezes. This has been like... If it doesn't work, and I'm always changing it. That's why I like stand-up. Um, are there Canadian jokes that I do? I do the uh, coldest winter ever. Can you give a demo of the joke? I don't have any jokes right now. I don't think I have any prepared. Um, you can look at it on the podcast, or if you go to EnglishFunCast.com, let me put the link. In the forum, every single joke I have from most of my podcasts are there. They're written there. And uh, when you listen to the podcast, I also explain the jokes. Website. Something that's good to do Pretty is much. to do cross promotions with, um, I guess, different teachers, different educators, um, to spread your audience. Um, for example, I have a podcast. I have. I do record my stand-up comedy stuff. Some of it is on the internet. I'm not posting links for that. <laughs> I don't want you guys to see it because I'll, I'll, I think stand-up. It's a lot of practice. Basically, I have an idea and I write it down and I go in front of an audience and I practice it and I see if it works and if it doesn't work and then I'm always changing it. That's why I like um, stand-up. Um, are there Canadian jokes that I do? I do some Canadian jokes. I, I do pretty much universal jokes. I'm pretty clean comic. I'm not too dirty. We had another good question here. We had an episode... I was on their podcast. Let's look. So a lot. Of, so Susan said a lot. Lots of competition for free content right now. Any other tips besides free content marketing strategy, um, website? Something that's good to do is to do cross promotions with, um, I guess, different teachers, different educators um, to spread your audience. Um, for example, I have a podcast, but sometimes I guest host on a different podcast and they'll guest host on mine. So if you check out my podcast, I guest hosted, um, there's a podcast in China, it's called China 232. It's these two brothers actually from Canada living in Shanghai. So I went on their podcast, they introduced me, they talked about me. And then they came and they were on my podcast. Uh, Last month, uh, I was on a songs. podcast. It's a new podcast. It's called All Ears English. I don't know if they're questions. And I think it's these or, two um, uh, girls, Lindsay and Gabby. The they're from Boston. Like and content, we had an episode. I was on their podcast. And they came on mine. And we, we created like a different like lesson plan. So I, I remember... I went on their podcast and I was teaching about my laugh and learn method. I was talking about TV shows that are good to improve English. And then they came on mine and they didn't know what I was going to teach them. The episode's going to be about. And what it was about is basically it was pickup lines. It was funny, it worked, and were the analogies or the homonyms, the meanings, and the pickup lines. So I just pretty much, I had some pretty, I had some pretty dirty pickup lines that I used on them, and they got pretty nervous. But it's definitely a great way to um, teach English. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? We got a lot of time left. And some, like I got, got a couple emails from, I have some German students who wanted um, to interview me or um, review my like my online course and I told them sure you can do that and they end up doing it and I actually get a lot of um, traffic from that and it definitely helps build your credibility and definitely so, build you as a brand. So remember, speak to your students. Um, if you have students, ask them like ask Yeah, them I can ask, answer that. All right, so you want to ask, someone wants to ask a question about a product, sure. What question do you have? Aprendamos. Oh, it's about an actual product. What, like a microphone, Logitech microphone? Um, market your stuff is actually get, get people to review your product. So that's something that I've also been doing. Let your students, some of your students actually have blogs or websites and some like I got, actually got a couple emails from I have some German students who wanted um, to interview
review me or I'm um, review my like my online course and I told them sure you can do that and they end up doing it and I actually get a lot of um, traffic from that and definitely helps build your credibility and definitely helps build you as a brand so remember speak to your students um, if you have students ask them like uh, tell them if you guys want to help with any marketing or was it for like interns or whatnot because you never know who your students are I had this one student and he was one of like the admins for like this huge Russian forum it was like if you guys are familiar with reddit so he was like one of like the admins for like the Russian version of reddit it's like I want to write an article about your podcast I was wondering if I can do that or ask you some questions and he did that and then that brought me like a lot of hits from Russia like I still get a ton of traffic so the term cross blogging what is the term for that cross blogging so I guess it's, it's, it could be cross blogging it's be guest guest posts so the guest um, to, to host or to have guests on your blog or podcast that's what would be like cross blogging when you talk to someone and you want to cross blog or be a guest host to say and I guess this is called cross promotion that's the term used you cross promote right you market something someone else market something you let them go on your blog they can market their stuff then they let you go on their blog and market your stuff and uh, same thing with podcasts right it's a great way because like I said there's many um, um, have different personalities and the listeners also have a lot of different personalities and sometimes I have a lot of people in my podcast that like me but and I went to all all ears English podcasts and I was talking there and maybe her audience maybe they like me too and they decided to listen to both podcasts right same thing um, all ears English came on to my podcast and maybe my audience like them also and they started listening to them that, also uh, so that's a great that way happened. great way to get a wider audience and find more people who like you for who you actually are Okay. Just kidding. Celsius, you would burn. That's it. You definitely burn. Thirsty guys, first thing. I see where is everyone here from today? I see a lot of people from like I guess like Spanish countries or whatnot. Where's everyone here from? Is it hot where you guys are? Because it's super cold here. Hey, you guys are from hot places. I gotta leave Canada. <laughs> it's freezing here. In regards to building a brand, in regards to I guess equipment for using. When, um, what have I been using? I guess I guess it's really important for us to have the proper equipment. Like you definitely want to have. Wow. Um, professional equipment. Real professional equipment is really really expensive, but like mid tier is okay. For example, the snowball. Um, that's pretty good equipment. Something. What else do I use? Um, if you're creating a video, that's probably hundred. It's probably Fahrenheit. I don't think that's. Really, really good. You don't have if that's Celsius, you would burn. I do you, to you definitely burn. It's called a Ravel or a lapel mic. It's one of those mics that you can put here to record the audio. That definitely helps with production. Hey guys, don't come to Canada. We had the what is the color vertex? It's freezing here, but. We do have um, good conditions right now for snowboarding and skiing. You gotta do that. It's exciting. You guys have any other questions? I guess in regards to building a brand, in regards to I guess equipment for using. When, um, what have I been using? I guess I guess it's really important. To have the proper equipment. Like you definitely want to have. Um, Professional equipment, real professional equipment is really, really expensive, but like mid tier is okay. For example, the snowball, um, that's pretty good equipment. Something, what else do I use? Um, if you're creating a video, um, most video cameras are really, really good. You don't have to invest in a video camera, but I do encourage you to invest in a microphone. It's called a Lavelle or a lapel mic. It's one of those mics that you can put here to record the audio. That definitely helps with production and creating lessons. Um, something else that's very cheap to invest in and it actually makes video look professional. Like if you looked at my English Funcast Institute video, it's a green screen. I recommend you guys to have a green screen. So I'll just write that down. So it's good to have a Lavelle 
cheap. Or really? Lapel. My I love Amazon. Something else you guys could do is you can also create you can create um, books and publish them. And also it's good to invest on Kindle. That would be a whole different in a green screen. With lights. With lighting. Like I invested, I bought a green screen I think a couple of months ago and I've been creating some videos of it. And I think I made my money back within I think within like one or two weeks. Like I made my money back easily. You'll definitely make your money back um, with all of these um, tools. Especially green screen. Like you can order it from Amazon. It's really, really cheap. Like Amazon, you can pretty much order green screen. I think all the stuff, everything I bought was pretty much from Amazon. I bought my mic from Amazon. I bought the Pell mic. I bought the snowball. Um, even the green screen. The green screen is cheap. I just got from the regular Amazon. It was maybe like 150 bucks. I paid for it. It's very, very cheap. I love Amazon. Something else that you guys could do is you can also create you can create um, books and publish it on Amazon for free. You can publish it on Kindle. That would be a whole different um, lecture um, for sure. But Amazon is definitely a good way to distribute yourself. Create space. Um, they have the KDP program. Another way if you want to market yourself, actually a really good way to market yourself is something that I do is my podcast. I download a lot of my podcast episodes and I put them, if you guys know what a torrent is, uh, torrent is a file sharing I guess service and a lot of people use it illegally when you think of torrents you think about it to download music or to download movies illegally or TV shows but there's actually people who um, you just also ebooks and torrents but what I do is I create a torrent of my podcast and people download it and because there isn't that many English learning um, torrents um, I get a lot of exposure from that and a lot of downloads and it's definitely would help your credibility. So that's like a secret. That's the secret I'm teaching you guys today. Take your teaching materials and create a torrent and just put it out there. Because once a couple of people download it, <laughs> seeding it, they and other people see. leech it, and then they, they become seeders, words. and it's there forever. Yeah, they want. Yeah, so I definitely recommend um, taking your materials and putting it as a torrent I mean, can um, online, to build credibility and to help you advertise yourself. Learn to be a teacher. Yeah, torrents. Not you. If you, so, if you, you know, if you go to any torrent secrets, site you and you type in it, right? "learn secrets, English," it's just put, "learn English." You'll see my torrent. The probably be like <laughs> "learn English" with Ricky Gervais or something, and then it'll show you like "learn English Spuncast." So that's 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 my that's secrets. Right. That's actually <laughs> one of my personal secrets that I'm telling you guys, and it definitely is going to get you a lot of exposure because. Millions and millions of people download torrents each and every single day, and there's a lot of people who download um, English learning torrents also. Great tool. Let's see. Let's see how many people have been downloading it. It's a site where people can post gigs or jobs, and all the jobs have to be at least five dollars. For all teachers here. And work for you, and I use I I've spent probably hundreds of dollars on this website, and mm -hmm. you can do two things on this website. You can use it um, for your business, for example, for me to get a graphic designer to create a logo, that costs hundreds of dollars. You can get someone to do it for five dollars for you. On yeah, you gotta pay for it. <laughs> secrets. You can't tell all the secrets because if you tell people all the secrets, then it's not going to be a secret anymore. But. <laughs> That's a good secret. Uh, I can tell you, I guess, if you guys want more secret, I can tell you a good marketing secret to use if you guys want to know what I use for my graphic design and um, to do a lot of stuff. I think the most useful website on the internet to use, I'm not sure about it, it's called Fiverr. So Fiverr is probably one of my favorite sites on the internet. And what Fiverr is, it's a site where people can post gigs or jobs, and all the jobs have to be at least $5. So for five dollars, um, people will edit your paper, will edit your resume. For five dollars, people will do graphic design work for you. And I use, I, I've spent probably hundreds of dollars on this website, and 
you can do two things with this website. You can use it um, for your business. For example, for me to get a graphic designer to create a logo, that costs hundreds of dollars. You can get someone to do it for five dollars for you on this website. So you save a lot of money. You can have someone help you with your um, um, graphic design with your um, developing your website. But it's also there's people there who also for five dollars, what they do is they tutor. So you can actually post gigs or stuff that you'll do for people. So if you're very good at editing, um, you can sell edit or for five dollars, and then every additional paper it's an additional five dollars. You can make money off of it. Um, you can teach people on Skype. You can say I'll teach you for let's say 15, 20 minutes for only five dollars, and if someone purchases and you teach them, you can tell them if you want more lessons from me for maybe an hour, it'll be maybe twenty dollars, and you can get clients from that service also. It has a lot of traffic. I love Fiverr. I use it all the time. Most of my graphic designs from Fiverr. Um, you can also get a lot of marketing done from Fiverr. Also, you can get people to um, write on their blog for you for five bucks. They can also write an article for you. They you can do press releases for you. So much stuff that you can do on Fiverr. You can people to translate your blog. I, I, I'm, I'm in love with Fiverr, guys. Like Fiverr is probably one of the best right. tools. One thing that you could do but you Good shouldn't questions. really do is some people get testimonials done, like video testimonials done for their services, like fake ones. And for that, I wouldn't really recommend it. Yeah, because right. thank you. Thank um, you so people will just see that they're reading a script and it's not really realistic or natural. Up. So I guess, yeah, yeah Fiverr is kind of like, it's down. kind of like help out, but um, it's for like everything. You can get people yeah. to do services. So help out is good, so I guess, for tutoring if you want someone um, um, someone to learn English from you. The, uh, the link to the but um, Fiverr is pretty much for anything. You could sell it. You could create a course, let's say a $5 course, and you can sell it on Fiverr. Or like for like $20, you can create like a gig where you'll be uh, like, be I will teach you the best way to study English for five dollars and give them maybe an ebook or something that you wrote. And there'll be actually people who buy it from you and, and they also everybody. rate you so, and uh, you get more um, buyers and it's a good way to express uh, YouTube by the way without anybody's name without the chat box just uh just the audio actually it's a podcast Let's see because all they're gonna see are, are the slides if that's okay. Do you have my permission to post? To publish it on YouTube. All right. Because if you don't, I won't. So, do we have the link to? Uh... Publish it. <laughs> right. Ron G is my name. Ron G. Sure. Okay. Oh, there it is. Why? Wow, that looks like kind of a lot. No, not the live class. Yeah. Is that the course? That looks like a really long link there. I don't know if that's going to take us to. Uh... No, it's the wrong one, Tom. It's got a lot of other stuff added to it out of the class. So uh, the WizIQ link, uh, if I can get it here. Anybody right. have it? Who's quick on the draw there? Probably I am. Uh, okay, let me get the link to the course, not to the class. Here it is. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. Just a sec. Mm -hmm. And by the way, um, to respond to this, they get a certificate. You know, they have to respond to 10 of the uh, live sessions and they get a certificate at the end of the MOOC. So uh, uh, we can publish it. Links in the chat. Put Ron G okay, is my name. Great. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the link to uh, the course. If you go into the course feed, you, you can start a discussion. Yeah, you it's can for also, Ron G. Um, respond to one another and uh, don't forget to reflect uh, Nancy is that a question if you record the whiz IQ recording instead of the live classes you can close the chat box and then you get all the video and the slides but no right that's right all right so thank you everybody uh, have a great rest of the day and uh, we'll see you tomorrow thank you Ron you'll get a certificate of participation Thanks a lot. All right. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I see Eduardo's here too. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.